CataractCoach.com. Does capsular excess morphology matter? I mean, if the optic is overlapped, does it even have to be a perfect circle? So I'm going to show you a complete cataract case here. Here's a patient who's going to get a toric monofocal lens. This patient's going to get a Johnson & Johnson Technus eye hands lens. So this is the first incision. You can see the cornea already has the markings. That's the steep axis of the cornea where we want to line up our toric lens. And now we can just kind of brush off some of these ink marks and clean that up. And then we'll start our case here. So in this case, we're going to do a capsule rexus as usual. And it's not going to be a perfect rexus. Now, I'm a perfectionist. I love a perfect rexus. I love when it looks that pretty. But my question is, does it even matter? So he's making the incision on that steep axis. And we've taken this into account for our toric eye well calculations. That looks like a nice incision. Now, here's where we do the rexus. And you'll see, normally I do a rexus counterclockwise, although you know, it really doesn't matter which direction you go. But I'm measuring there, getting an idea, starting to poke in and do our rexus. And here's where I normally start. And it just didn't want to go counterclockwise. Okay, how about clockwise? All right, we'll take it. It's going clockwise. We'll still do a nice five millimeter round caps rexus. And we're continuing it and going all the way around. And it looks pretty good so far. I'll take it. And of course, we'll measure here at the end using those forceps. And the last bit here. We kind of just lose our concentration. A couple of grabs didn't work. Finally get it. Let's just finish it up. And there's that one area. Eesh. I know. It's not, it's not a big deal. It doesn't make a difference. This patient literally had a perfect 2020 outcome. But it's just that perfectionist mindset. You know, as you do this surgery over and over again, over so many years or decades, tens of thousands of these cataract surgeries, you really take pride in getting it exactly perfect. But I'm happy to say that the rex morphology actually does not make much of a difference. Let me just speed up the lens nucleus removal here. What's interesting in this case is it's kind of a softer gummy cataract. And I got a chop there, but I don't think it fully propagated. So I'm having a hard time pulling up into the pieces. So this is that type of category where it's not really that dense. And it's sometimes hard to get the chops to fully propagate. So I've tried a couple of times in various quadrants here. And still not kind of achieving what I want. I'm going to come out for a second adjust my scope settings the microscope get a better view and let's try something different let's use that chopper to help kind of go behind those pieces and bring them up there you go so just want to show you not every case is just textbook boom 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 fast no sometimes you gotta spend the energy and the effort to just take it the case as it comes that's the beauty in this surgery is that every case is actually a little bit different no two are exactly alike so nucleus comes up pretty easily. Again, we've got the video going here two times normal speed just so we can get to the good part. And that is, again, going to that rexus. Now, when femtosecond lasers first came out 10 years ago, we heard a lot of uh, marketing that making a perfect rexus will give you a better effective lens position and more accurate post-op results. And, you know, I don't think it made much of a difference. In fact, studies have shown that it didn't. So if you overlap the optic for most of the optic, then I think you're going to have the same refractive outcome whether or not it was a perfect 5 millimeter circle. So here at the end of the case here, filling the capsule bag, you can see it's a pretty darn good rexus. It's just that one area is less than perfectly circular. Now, I know I realize if you're a beginning uh, a surgeon, a novice, or a resident, you may think, God, this guy's crazy. Why are you worrying about that? It's of no consequence. But as you see, as you do thousands and thousands of these cases, you really want to perfect your game. But I want to show you that obviously there's no such thing in our field as 100% perfection. You know, if you, had a, if you had a basketball player who threw 90% from the free throw line, you'd say, that's pretty good. And you saw one who threw 95%, you'd say, wow, that's excellent. But you as a surgeon, your patients won't allow you to shoot 95% in terms of patient accuracy with surgery. So there's the lens. That's the, the Technus Toric Ihans monofocal. And we're going to go ahead and that's already in the eye. It looks great. And we'll clean up and finish the case. You'll see at the end here, it's a beautiful overlap. So I wouldn't worry about it. If you got a good overlap of the optic by the rexus, let's say if you have at least seven or eight clock guys of overlap, that means you're probably going to keep the lens in its normal planar configuration. If, however, you don't have that good overlap and you have one edge of the lens optic tilting forwards or coming up or, or becoming um, put at an angle, that may induce some aberrations like some astigmatism or other things. So you got to be careful about that. So in most of these cases, however, listen, you don't have to have a perfect rexus. It is part of your signature. I like it to be as perfect as possible. This patient certainly had a beautiful surgical outcome in 20-20 vision. 
But every time I look real carefully at that Rexus Edge, I think, gosh, if only I would have made that just a fraction of a millimeter larger in that one spot. Sealing up the incision there, you can see there's still some viscoelastic in the eye. Definitely don't want to leave that in the eye. That's going to cause a little bit of a pressure spike if you do. So go back in with the eye probe. Let's clean that up. I'm really liking the position of this lens. It's nicely lined up. Remember, this lens had that central one millimeter increased curvature on the optic, which you really cannot see at the microscope. So you just have to set up the prekingium as best you can. There's no central beam-shaping element that's visible to the surgeon. And there's the end of the case. Looks pretty good, so don't worry about it. Rex's morphology is important to a degree, but don't be so hard on yourself like me.